Something arrived in the mail. Let's see what it is. I already know what it is, but it's been proven that touting a little secret in the first 30 seconds of a video improves viewer retention, so that's what I'm doing. And now, let's quickly unbox this before you punish me for doing what everyone else does by clicking away. Yeah. Oh. Right. Alright. Okay. So, only the most OG viewers out there are going to remember the video series I started and kind of abandoned almost one year ago. So, does having bought the solar charge controller mean I gave up on the project? Well, technically yes, but only because, to be honest, it really didn't make that much sense to begin with because there are cheap solar charge controllers available so, today we're gonna quickly talk about why it didn't make much sense and why I ended up just buying the thing. But before all that, let's quickly get this thing mounted up in my room, connect it to the battery, hook up the solar panel and finally, finally charge my phone with solar power after waiting for it for almost an entire year. You see, I really couldn't let another entire summer of sunshine come and go charging my phone on nuclear power from the wall outlet. Okay, everything's hooked up and ready to go. Very important, the order in which you connect the appliances to the charge controller. First you need to connect the battery and then the solar panel and only at last the load. That is, if you have a load, since I'm only going to use the USB output of this thing, I don't have a load connected right now. Currently it's not charging yet because the solar panel is still out there wrapped in a black trash bag ever since I had to remove it from the windowsill last November in order to put up my Christmas illumination. And for now we're actually gonna leave it like that because the next step is to adjust all the settings in this charge controller in order to fit our setup. And to do that we have our user manual which is the usual, not very helpful, one side plain Chinese, the other badly translated English, but it's gonna be good enough. So you have three buttons on here, one menu button and one up and one down arrow. The menu button lets you click through the menus, obviously. So if we read the user manual, it tells us the regulator is only suitable for lead acid batteries, open AGM gel. It is not suited for nickel metal hydride, lithium ions or other batteries. Well, that is great news. I have a lithium polymer battery connected right now. Does that mean I can't use it? Well, fortunately, I tell you, you can use it nonetheless because here it says set voltage. So what we're gonna do is click through the menu, if we click there, you, we get the maximum charge voltage, which is currently 14.4 volt, as for a standard lead acid battery. Then we get the... I don't really understand what that voltage is. It says discharge reconnect. What does that even mean? I don't fully understand that, but the lowest voltage it will discharge to is 10.7 volt in this menu. So we click 14.4. The discharge reconnect is 12.6, I don't fully understand what that is, and then 10.7 volt, the lowest voltage it will discharge to. Um, then we get 24 hours, obviously, and battery type 1. It is suited for three battery types, as it says here, open, AGM, and gel. 
So what we're going to do is, first of all, turn the output off. If we don't click on menu, but just click on the down arrow, it turns the output off. We don't need the output, so it's off. So we click through the menu until we arrive at the battery type, which is battery type 1. Then we press and hold the menu button until it starts blinking. Then we can adjust it. We're going to adjust it to battery type 2. Then press and hold the menu button again. And now it's adjusted for the other type of lead acid battery. And fortunately on this battery we get the maximum charge voltage is 12.6. And now it tells us it's almost full. Also because the battery is currently at 11.9 volts. So the maximum charge voltage is 12.6. The other discharge reconnect is 10.5. And we get 9 volt at, as the lowest voltage it will discharge to. So that is almost usable, but we need to adjust it a little bit. So we press the menu to get the maximum charge voltage, then we press and hold the menu button until it starts flashing, which it does now. And now I'm going to take it down to 12 volts only, because I only want to charge this battery up to like 80%, otherwise it's going to degrade the battery faster. So now we have 12 volt maximum charge voltage, then we click once more and we get the discharge reconnect, whatever that is, I don't fully understand it. So we're just gonna put it at 10 volts for now, I think. Starts flashing, turn it down to 10 volts, long press menu. And we get maximum charge voltage 12 volts, discharge reconnect 10 volts, and the lowest voltage it will charge to is already 9 volts. I'm going to leave it at 9 volts because that is a 3S LiPo battery and 9 volts is obviously 3 volts per battery. So that should be everything adjusted on battery type 2 and that's basically it. Yeah. Now we just need to get the solar panel out of this bag and mount it to the windowsill and it should start charging with solar power. And oh, by the way, if I use a USB cable, if I plug it in here, we can see there is 5 volt USB because the LED on this plug is lit. There is 5 volts coming out of the USB port. Perfect! And we're charging solar energy! Oh my god, I managed to hook it up the wrong way around on the first try. Guys, don't do that. Double check everything. I was lucky it didn't fry the controller. But now it is charging as you can see. It should soon cut off the charging as you can see it's already at flashing 12 volts. Now I kind of want to try charging something. So let's use this battery with charge circuit. Awkwardly put it in my hand. And now as soon as I plug this in, you should see a red LED light up. And yes, we're charging. That is basically it. Now to give it some finishing touches, I just need to remove this protective film. Oddly satisfying. And there we are. Plug it in again and we are charging. Great, while this is charging, let's take the prototype, which you can see here, down to the basement and talk about that. Well, that was easy enough that I wouldn't really have needed to connect the solar panel the wrong way around, to be honest. But things happen, so now that's done, why did I give up on the project? In a nutshell, for two reasons. A, there just wasn't enough interest in the project amongst the majority of my viewership to justify spending another couple hundreds of hours getting it to work and making several more videos about it that ultimately end up getting very few views because simply nobody cares about the project. And B, 
it just ain't worth it anyway, since all the components I used on here, the Arduino Pro Mini, the OLED display, and the DC to DC buck converter, were in total more expensive than the entire solar charge controller, especially now that a single Arduino costs freaking 10 bucks. It would literally have been a waste of a good Arduino to use it on a project which I can just buy for less than a single Arduino. Now let's take a closer look at the prototype. This is actually the second one I made. Um, here's the schematic. If that interests you, just take a screenshot. But beware, it is neither completely finished nor ideal. Anyway, basically we have the Arduino Pro Mini, the display and the DC to DC converter to regulate the 12 volts from the 3S LiPo down to 5 volts for charging your phone. Then we have a double MOSFET, a P channel and an N channel in one package to switch on the charging from the solar panel as well as the load, your bucket regulator, a small 5 volt regulator to get 5 volts for the Pro Mini. Now I know there is a 3.3 volt onboard regulator on the Pro Mini, but guess what? This stupid regulator is only suited for 6 volts. And I didn't know that on the first prototype I had no 5 volt regulator. Then I made the mistake of unplugging the battery before I unplugged the solar panel. So obviously since there was no load on the solar panel anymore without the battery, the open circuit voltage on a solar panel is much higher, so it shot up to like 21 volts and there was a little pop accompanied by the well-known smell of cremated electronics the onboard regulator was burst. Fortunately, it failed open circuit, so luckily the Pro Mini wasn't fried, but nonetheless I learned this stinky onboard regulator is only suited for up to 6 volts, which is great. So I put a 5 volt regulator there. Then we have a couple of LEDs, two push buttons, and a couple of resistive dividers to measure voltages on several points in the circuit. Basically, we need to monitor the voltage coming out of the solar panel as well as the battery voltage and the current flowing in or out of the battery. Only in the battery because I can't measure negative voltages with the Arduino. Yeah, let's plug it in and see what happens. Basically, <clears throat> the first thing we get once we plug in the battery is a nice little piece of self-advertising. That was actually pretty easy to program in. It was quite interesting, but then it goes black, as you can see. Technically, it should be in standby. It is not. I wanted it to go in standby. I never got around to do that. Now, if I press the left button, we get this nice little display telling us how much percentage there is remaining in the battery. And if I push the red button, the, the right button, we get the output turned on along with this LED. Now, problems start to arise whenever I start plugging something in and the battery gets either charged or discharged. If I plug in the load, now if I press the left button again, we only have 40% remaining. Now, th there is something real fishy going on. We get erroneous voltage measurements all over the place. I don't know what's going wrong, I figure it might be switching noise from the DC to DC converter, filtering in and messing up the measurements on the analog input pins, but I don't really know. I didn't try putting a decoupling capacitor here, so I don't really know what it is. Never mind. Also, the push buttons don't really work reliably every single time because the stupid interrupt has problems with the bouncing of the contacts. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I put a capacitor in parallel, but that doesn't change that much. The left one, now we have 54% remaining. It is completely ridiculous. If I turn on the output and we have only 37% remaining, it is completely erroneous. And it gets even worse once the solar panel puts power into the circuit. Let's just simulate the solar panel generating voltage by plugging in this power supply. And then you can suddenly see, well, the display turns on, but it suddenly tells us charge 117%, 109%. It's completely erroneous. And then it starts flashing these LEDs because technically this LED should 
show us when it's charged and stay on because I want the display to stay on when it's charged and also when the solar panel is generating more power than the circuit consumes which means it turns off the charging but as soon as the oh now it's oh wow now it is now it's charged again now it's flipping back and forth between a little charging animation and yeah it doesn't it it's completely screwed up it is completely screwed up tells us it's charging if i unplug the power supply then hopefully it's draining what is it doing now it's stuck yeah the code doesn't work it's awful look at these measurements 30 percent that's total bullshit it's it doesn't work <laughs> the code is full of bugs and the most difficult thing in the code is to actually figure out when it's daytime and when it's night because like I said I want the display to be on whenever it's daytime whenever the solar panel generates more power than the circuit itself consumes then I want the display to be lit and tell me the percentage as well as this nice battery charging animation you just saw but whenever it's getting dark I want the display to turn off and the Arduino to go into standby and to figure out when it's day and night it has another little analog input on the solar panel measuring the voltage coming out of the solar panel to figure out whether it's daytime or not it also keeps track of the current flowing into the battery from the solar panel but it is terribly difficult to get the code to figure out when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. It just doesn't work. Then we get all these completely fake voltage measurements, like 34% remaining. That is total bullshit, because as soon as I turn off the output, now we have 51% remaining. And also, if it's actually 50%, then it should be charging whenever the solar panel generates power. But obviously, if I plug this in, it says charged 130%. It's completely fake. Nothing works. It is horrendous. <laughs> it just doesn't work. I couldn't get it to work. And it wouldn't have taken me one hell of a lot of time to get it working. It's just full of bugs. I don't know why it doesn't work. It is completely. If I turn off the output, then nothing happens. Now it's charging 142%, 101%, 102%, it's completely bullshit. Then it starts flashing between the charged and the charging. This green LED signifies it's currently charging and it should light whenever there is current flowing into the battery from the solar panel. But as you can see it's flashing back and forth because every time it's charged it cuts off the charging, but then the voltage obviously drops a lot, and then it turns the charging on again, and so forth. It just doesn't work. This is why I kind of gave up. It, first of all, didn't make sense, and second, it was full of bugs I wasn't really able to resolve. So yeah, that's why I gave up. It literally was too much for my admittedly moderate programming skills. I mean, I have no clue why my figure out daytime function doesn't work at all or why does these completely crazy measurements. I just have no clue. Well, I mean, I knew it might happen that I'm not really capable of programming it properly, but I would not have never guessed that it would be so incredibly difficult or that I would run into these kinds of problems. Anyway, this is where I'm going to end the video by me plugging in my actual phone to charge on the new setup. I couldn't do that previously because I'm currently using my new phone to record video as well as my old phone to record audio. So I can't plug it in while I'm using it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and I will see you don't know when.